I'm Rachel Poli here with Ari Meglin, and we're your hosts for the Merry Writer Podcast. For those of you listening, welcome back to episode eight. Today's topic is what is your go-to snack and drink when writing? Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening so you never miss a show. If you enjoy our episodes, please give it a like. So what is your go-to snack and drink when writing? I'm sure we've all seen those memes floating around the internet about how we writers forget to shower or ignore our household chores and forget to eat. But sometimes that's not necessarily the case because we do eat and drink when we write. Although to be fair, I do love an excuse to not do my chores. And I hate to say showering is not pleasant right now because we have an old shower that needs replacing and literally squeals when it's in use. Not exactly relaxing when it feels like you're showering with a bitchy banshee who hates your guts. That sounds horrible and I'm sorry. (laughs) Oh, it really is like so high pitched as well. And it just gets louder and louder. And you're suddenly like really like washing your hair really fast. I've got to get out of here. It's, It's awful. It's so awful. I'm going to end up hosing myself out in the garden just to stop from dealing with it. I actually got a new shower head about a year ago, and it's the most delightful thing I've ever had in my life. And it's one of those detachable ones, and it's, it's so fun. <laughs> I hate you right now. <laughs> I just want you to know that. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> this podcast is canceled. <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking anymore. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> we got into the shower. <laughs> Okay, let's get back to the topic, which I've already forgotten. Food and drink. Food and drink. I will admit, when it comes to showering, I do sometimes put that on my to-do list because I will actually forget to shower. (laughs) (laughs) You just get sucked into whatever work you're doing that it's like by the end of the night, it's like, oh, I I don't want my hair all wet. Just forget that. But with that said, when it comes to writing, I do sometimes forget to eat because I'll say I'll grab something when I'm done. And then I end up sitting at my desk for way longer than I plan. And then I end up not eating anything. And then by the time dinner rolls around, I'm absolutely starving. And I can't figure out why. And it's because I barely ate anything all day. (laughs) But when I do eat, when I write, I try to grab something light and nothing too messy because I don't want to get my keyboard dirty. And if I'm taking notes on a notebook... I don't want to get the pen messy and stuff on my notebook paper because I I will do that. I'll get stains all over my notebook. I'll spill my coffee. Nine times out of the 10, I try not to eat when I write. I know what you mean because I'm not a big fan of crumbs everywhere and I I, I will spill crumbs everywhere if if I'm not careful. So I'm very careful about what I pick for my snacks and I have moments of trying to be good. And I say moments and not all the time because that doesn't happen. And it's when I have what I call veggie snackies and that will usually consist of carrots, bell peppers, cherry tomatoes, all cut up, easy to just kind of dip into, snack through the day. Obviously it's a little bit like wet so always make sure I've got a towel around so I'm not putting, you know, fruit and and veggie juices on the keyboard (laughs) that sounds horrible doesn't it (laughs) this is going to be a very giggly episode people i know (laughs) my partner's figured out how to make roasted tamari almonds um mainly because the almonds are really good for you but i hate the taste of almonds normally but when they're coated in tamari i kind of go crazy for them I appreciate that roasting nuts is not really healthy, but it's kind of healthier than, you know, roasted peanuts. So I'm still classing it as a win. But then I will get cravings that kick in and I will eat through a whole pack of cookies in 20 minutes sometimes. That sounds more like me. I don't, I mean, you are healthy. You're listing carrots and bell peppers and tomatoes and I don't need any of that stuff. My diet consists (laughs) of goldfish. All the different flavors of goldfish. Is that a thing in America? Because... We have goldfish and the real fish that swim in a tank. What are goldfish that you're talking about? You don't know what goldfish are? The little fish that swim. <laughs> no, but like the I... little goldfish crackers. I don't have that. I don't remember. We've had, we've had little like fish and chip crisps that were years ago. I've never even seen them for ages. We don't. I don't think we have goldfish crackers. I don't think that's a thing. Over here. I might be wrong. We'll have to ask all the British listeners if they know what I'm t- what you're talking about. But I I was like. You're eating goldfish? No, not like <laughs> real goldfish. You've never seen these before? 
No, I don't think we have those. Oh my gosh. This is my favorite. I feel like I'm missing out suddenly. You are missing out. I want out. goldfish crackers. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, was one of those boxes you just showed me pizza flavor? Yes, this is, this is pizza. How can you have pizza flavor? Because there are different pizzas. That doesn't make sense. Well, it's like a brain mess. You know, if I didn't think that deeply into it. <laughs> But it's good and it's salty and the flavor blasted is extra cheesy and it's spicy and it's good and it's delightful and you really are missing out. I feel like I'm I'm standing on the side of the healthy and you are on the side of the very unhealthy with your oh. salty cheesy crisps. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is the thing. I this is part of the reason why I don't eat when I write because goldfish is my favorite thing in the world. And a lot of it, like the cheese dust, gets all over your hands. So therefore, it would uh, get all over the keyboard and my pens <laughs> and all this. So I try not to gravitate towards it. The, the pizza, it's just salty. But still, you, like you said, crumbs, they get everywhere. Mm. And just forget it. But I want to go back to what you said. You, mes you mentioned roasted almonds. What's tamari? Yes. I've never heard that before. Um, it's some sort of like, a, I think it's a, I, I'm going to sort of kind of guess because I do not do any cooking in our house. My partner does all the cooking. I am allowed into the kitchen to use the kettle, which I don't do very well. And then I'm allowed out again. I'm not allowed to touch anything <laughs> because I'm awful in the kitchen. Um, I think it's some sort of like spicy or some sort of powder that you add to, I don't know. It, it, he uses spices and weird things. So I'm assuming it's some sort of spicy powder that you sort of sprinkle on, I think. I don't know. I don't watch him do it. He just does it and he tells me about it and then he, and then he gives it me and I eat it. And that, that's, that's how our relationship is. He gives me things, I eat them. Hopefully it's okay. I don't know. Well, that's how <laughs> I do like spicy things. So that does sound good. <laughs> Although I don't, I don't like almonds. No, no, I don't. There's a horrible taste to almonds, but when they're covered in tamari and they've been roasted, they are the nicest thing. Oh. You can eat, if you eat them when they've just come out, they're quite soft and they taste really nice, or you can wait till they've cooled and they're really crunchy and the horrible almond taste is gone and you've just got the nice tamari taste. Seriously, they are so nice. I got so addicted. So yeah, that's, and again, they're not, they're not that healthy because they're roasted and roasted isn't apparently the best way of having nuts, but almonds are good for you in some way so I'm classing it as a compromise that is a good compromise and also you mentioned fruits and vegetables so I think you you've got your bases covered I'm pretty sure <laughs> meanwhile I'm over here eating goldfish and <laughs> <laughs> oh Doritos I do love Doritos I have heard of them see <laughs> yeah, very good yep that's good <laughs> Doritos are so good oh man oh. That, that is another one. Cheesy dust all over the fingers with Doritos. And yes. you spend all the time licking them off. Yeah. I know. You can't get any writing done that way. No. No. Pretzels are a good snack, though. See, I have never had a pretzel. Because, again, that's a thing that's mostly over in the U.S., I think. I, I don't see them over here. We don't... I, I think there probably are. There's a lot of things from the U.S. that have come over here. But I don't see pretzels anywhere. So... And they don't know. They don't look very nice to me. They're like a big knotted thing, aren't they? <laughs> they, they, don't, they don't look appetizing. There's no chocolate on it or anything, or cheesy dust. No, they're, they're chocolate-covered to... pretzels. Oh, I must have missed those. Those are really them. good. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably have had our, our lunch before we had this episode recorded, because I am starving right now. <laughs> well, I just downed my third cup of coffee. So, well, so let's get into that. Food aside, if I'm really hungry, but I don't want to get anything all over my writing, I'll just have a drink. Because coffee does fill me up, which probably isn't a good thing, especially since yep. I drink so much of it. But yeah, I'll, I'll grab a cup of coffee while I write, or I usually drink seltzer water. I call it soda water. Um, it's not just fizzy water. Is that what you guys call fizzy water? Yes. Yeah. Fizzy water. <laughs> <laughs> Using all these weird words. It's like fizzy I was just going to say, we're learning so many new things this <laughs> We're getting nice cultural differences yeah, between really. uh, the UK and the US. <laughs> but yes, I drink fizzy water. I'm going to have to start calling it now. Fizzy water. I like that. <laughs> um, but also, it depends on the season for me, because I like warm drinks in the winter and cool drinks in the summer. 
I mean, I live in, I live on the East Coast. The, the weather is always fluctuating and people, it could be below zero degrees. It could be the dead of winter and people are still walking around with iced coffee. That is not me. I need warm <laughs> when I'm cold and cool when I'm warm. That's the healthiest I get is probably my water. That's it. Oh, something. That is something. <laughs> yeah. I had a run of drinking just water. Now, I have to say I hate fizzy water. I don't drink anything fizzy. It's just horrible for me. So I have normal tap water. And I even, I'm one of those horrible people that likes it at room temperature. I don't like ice cold water. It has to be like warmed <laughs> to, that, to room temperature. It's like, and everyone's like, Ugh! but that's what I like. But the, the drinking of water did not last. And now I'm almost exclusively drinking cups of tea. And I try and limit that to about four cups a day. And it does not always work. And what you said about how where you are, the temperature fluctuates and you have hot, hot drinks in winter. No, hot drinks in summer, cold drinks in winter. Well, I'm British. So we just drink tea the whole time. Hot, <laughs> cold, it doesn't matter. You have to have a cup of tea all the time. You may have the odd cup of water or sparkling wine or whatever people drink. Um, but we always have to drink tea. So it's roasting outside right now, and I've already had three cups of tea, and I haven't had any water. So. <laughs> you should go get a glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> and then wait till it warms up a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, no, I agree with that, though, because I don't like anything too cold either. I, I like huh? my water warm. I don't stick it in the refrigerator or anything. I leave it outside on my desk. I, I have a shelf underneath my desk, and that is just filled with all of my soda water bottles and goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of stacking notebooks and actual actual work items, that's where my stash is. <laughs> Actually, I have to go back because you mentioned, was it iced coffee? This is another weird American thing that you guys do where you ice your coffee and you ice your tea. And it just, we're, we're just over here going, what the f you know, <laughs> it just seems so weird to us. I appreciate it's probably one of those things that's crept over into London. They're always trying weird stuff. But where I was, um, where I was brought up and in the north of England and now over in Northern Ireland where I am now, it's like, yeah, you wouldn't find people drinking iced coffee and iced tea. They'd get looks, lots of looks, and then possibly run out of the village. That is a possibility. That, that's kind of great, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Iced coffee is really good. I mean, I, as I said, I won't drink iced coffee in the winter like a lot of people here do, but it, it is really good. Tea, hot tea or iced tea, I don't really like tea. I never got into it. I know. Blasphema. I know. Blasphema. <laughs> My entire family drinks tea, but I, I don't like it. I never liked the taste. I, most of the time, I can't even really stand the smell. Coffee is my drink of choice and that's it. There's no, I wish I liked tea. And people say, you know, drink this certain tea before bed if you're having trouble sleeping. I'm like, no, I don't like that. <laughs> oh no, no. I, there's, there's a lot of these like fruity teas or flavored teas or, or, or anything. I, I, no, we don't, we don't deal with that either. We, the, the idea is it's black tea. And by black tea, I don't mean that you don't have it with milk. It's just the type of tea is black tea. Now my partner, again, he's, he loves his green teas, he loves his red teas, he's had white teas, you know, all these different flavors, all these different fruitiness and all things. And it's just like, that's not tea in my eyes. That's just weird. And it smells <laughs> funny. And he has to use special strainers to, to get, oh no. It's like, just get a tea bag, pour the kettle water, it's fine. Simple, easy, none of this odd tea. No, we just stick to normal tea and it's fine. That's what I like. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. We have so many different teas in my house. We have green tea. We have all those flavored different teas. We have regular tea. I've never heard of red tea or white tea. I have no idea what those are. And then we have tea bags with the string on it. And then we have pillow tea bags. I don't know. It's confusing. I'm like, just give me a cup of coffee. I put the coffee grounds in. It brews. I put cream in. Boom. Done. And it smells good. <laughs> I will disagree with that. It does not smell good. <laughs> Coffee smells awful. But I know what you mean with the tea because like if my partner comes and says, do you want a cup of tea? He's like, yes, I do. And he makes me a cup of tea. I say, do you want a cup of tea? And he says, yes. And I'm like, what tea do you want? And how do you need me to brew it? 
because depending if it's green tea, it only stews for like 30 seconds. If it's red tea, such as um, red bush, or I think it's called rub rub rubrios or something, what a weird name it's got, that brews a bit differently. If it's oolong or smoky lapsang, they have to be brewed differently. So it becomes this huge job where you feel like some sort of engineer and you have to go through all these different steps to get the result. And it's like, you know what? Just don't be so difficult. Just have tea. Just a tea. But he keeps finding these odd teas to try. This is a topic about tea. <laughs> yeah, really. I think we finally <laughs> found something we disagree on. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I have a thought because I feel like something we neither of us have mentioned. Hot chocolate. What are your thoughts on hot chocolate? I do like hot chocolate. But and it's like that is a winter drink that is a drink you only drink in winter mm, you, I agree. It, it's it's a nighttime drink you have it in the evening because it usually just puts me to sleep and it's like it's got to be in a bigger mug than a normal cup of, of like tea or coffee it's got to be in a nice big chunky mug possibly while you're wearing a thick jumper possibly while you've got a pet on your knee and a roaring fire obviously you can't all have this but this is this is the image that comes with hot chocolate and I think that's like a necessity. I can agree with that. I will admit hot chocolate is not my favorite. When I was younger, <gasps> I used to drink. <laughs> <laughs> when I was younger, I used to drink hot chocolate every single day. I would have it before school, actually. I'd wake up and I'd have hot chocolate and then I'd come home and I'd have hot chocolate at night or while I did my homework. It was the only thing I, I drank. But now I don't really care too much for it. I don't like hot chocolate that much, except this past winter, the kids I babysit for, they had, their, their parents bought some sort of brand of hot chocolate, and it was the most delightful thing I've ever had, to the point where I went to the store after babysitting one day, and I bought a tub of it, and I drank it all <laughs> this past winter, and the thing is, I don't really like chocolate. Which, okay, I, I, I don't think we can be friends anymore. What, 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 what is this? You don't like, you don't drink tea, you don't like chocolate. I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I can't cope over here. I'm about to cry. I'm about to cry. I know. It's the weirdest thing. I, I just, I'm not a chocolate person. I don't really like sweet things. I'm more of a salty person. Like, give me a bag <laughs> of chips over a chocolate bar any day, and I will eat that whole bag in one sitting. But that's the thing, you know. Bringing the conversation back to food and writing, uh, like before NaNoWriMo every November, people use their Halloween candy as little incentives and rewards to keep themselves writing. Oh, if I write 500 words, I can eat a candy bar. If I write 1,000 words, I can eat two candy bars. And people do that, and I'm like, I, I don't really, that's not an incentive for me. I don't think I have the, um, the patience or the willpower to say, once I've done X, I will have you know why treat i think it would just be i'd start with that and then i'd be watching it and watching it and I'd, well i'll just have a little bit now just to get, you know i've written 10 words that's gotta be something and then suddenly the whole chocolate's gone and i feel sick and i can't carry on writing for the day yeah that's a good point i don't, I don't understand how some people do it but i i can't use food or drink for an incentive for me to keep writing mm -hmm. Like, if I'm going to have a cup of coffee, I'm going to drink it right then and there before it gets cold. I think the idea of incentives with things like that, anyway, it's like, because say you did really well, you were writing and writing and writing. It's like, that's a lot of chocolate. We're already in a sedentary hobby or career, depending on where you are in your writing journey. That's not the best way of doing it, I don't think. It's like just constantly shoving in chocolate every time you write. I, I think I'd probably stop writing because I'd just oh, yeah. end up so sick. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. But with that said, is there any food or drink that you have that you think would be typical of a writer to have? I mean, for me, I enjoy coffee regardless, but I think I tend to drink more coffee while writing because of the aesthetic of it. Writers are supposed to have a lot of caffeine, like supposed to, in air quotes. <laughs> Nobody can see this, but I'm doing air quotes. <laughs> I can see it. I get it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> But anyway, what about you? Or is there any food or drink that's typical of a writer for you? Uh, I think similar to what you said, it's like I think anything with caffeine is considered the writer's drink. That's coffee, it's tea, or those horrible, horrible energy drinks that people go a bit crazy on when they're like chugging them down. 
I'm not sure about food though, because I have talked to different writers and everyone seems to have something different. I can't even say, oh yeah, er, you know, at least the majority of writers say they all eat chocolate or they all eat biscuits or they all eat vegetables or they all eat fruit. It's like everyone seems to be different. And I don't know if that's like um, over all the different countries because people have different things like goldfish, which I had never heard of. (laughs) (laughs) So so it could be that it's, you know, everyone has lots of different snacky foods or just because there's such a large array of snacky foods that people can have. But uh, no, no, I don't think, I don't think there's a typical food. Definitely not. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I agree with you on the food, but for the drink, it is funny how writers typically go for caffeinated drinks and if somebody says oh i don't like coffee or i don't like tea or i don't drink energy drinks it's like people get so shocked when a writer doesn't have caffeine and it's like not every writer stays up really late at night writing their novel and not every writer (laughs) needs caffeine to wake up in the morning to write their novel no no that's it it's like i suppose if yeah if you are writing like if you're getting up and writing at 5 a.m or if you're staying up till 2 a.m maybe when i have a cup of tea it's not the caffeine isn't there to boost me in the morning i am already one of those annoying morning people that just goes like morning hey wide awake with the rest of the day i don't need caffeine for that that's just a bonus that it's nice and tasty yeah Uh, (laughs) but no i just i don't know it's uh, I think it's just become one of those things that we just we just reach for it as a writer it's just like chugging it and chugging it just to to keep the brain cells going I don't know I mean I don't drink coffee for the caffeine I drink it because it's delicious no and it's warm in the winter no <laughs> <laughs> it's stinky is what it is it's stinky it, it is looks not- like tar no it's so stinky <laughs> tea is stinky <laughs> Tea is lovely. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I, I add lots of milk and sugar, so I'm kind of like, I get rid of the taste of tea with sugar and milk. So, <laughs> See, not healthy at all. <laughs> but you're still getting your fruits and veggies in, so that's fine. Yes, although I haven't done it for a while, so I can't, I don't think I can claim to be as healthy as I used to be because I haven't had, although actually no, I can. The reason I'm not having veggie snackies anymore is because of the lockdown. While we the supermarkets are doing a lot better, getting fresh fruit and veg has become more difficult because it's the sort of thing that goes out really fast and they're just not getting the same quantities they used to. So I'm blaming the lockdown. That is the reason I have become a lot unhealthier. Yeah, that's right. it. That's, we're, going, that's we're going with the lockdown. <laughs> I mean, to be fair with the lockdown, like I've been buying a lot more junk food because they keep longer and there's things that I, like Pop-Tarts. I've been on a Pop-Tart kick. Do you have Pop-Tarts over there? We do have pop tarts, okay. and can I say, how do you people eat them? They are so sugary. It's, I mean, we've we don't have the plain ones. It's like the chocolate ones, or ones with like a white icing and lots of sprinkles. But you eat them, and they're just—it's just like biting into raw sugar. I just, I honestly can't understand how how people can eat them. It's like it makes your teeth itch. I know <laughs> it, it, they're so gross, but they're so good at the same time. <laughs> Pop tarts. I can have pop tarts while I write because they're not too messy. <laughs> I think I crumble quite a lot because I would probably bite in and then drop a piece and they'd be like jammy on the inside. <laughs> well, see, I have, um, I'll put it on a napkin and then I'll break pieces off. I won't actually bite it. See, I'm, I, I'm thinking up here. <laughs> <laughs> you do it very delicately and I'm just like, nah, 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 good nah. ideas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on that note, because I downed three cups of coffee. I want to go get another one. So let's end this episode. (laughs) We hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Feel free to share your own snack and drink preferences in the comments or on Twitter using the hashtag the Merry Writer Podcast. If you heard last week's episode, you should know that we have set up a Patreon page. So head on over to patreon.com forward slash the Merry Writer Podcast, where we offer all sorts of goodies, such as mini bonus episodes, extra content, bloopers, and more. Tune in next week for another episode of the Merry Writer Podcast, where we ask all the right questions. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. This podcast is brought to you by Shiny Objects. We're easily distracted. The music titled Inspired is by Kevin McLeod, licensed under Creative Commons 4.0.